Vincent comes to me with this great idea that somebody just sprang on him and they're going to pay him a lot of money to do it. He says, I'm going to ride the 12 most amazing roller coasters in the United States. <laughs> so, oh my God. He was probably in his 60s at this point? Oh, yeah. And it, they didn't expect him to live more than about 66, 67 years old. So I said, okay, Vincent, uh, that's, it's whatever you want to do it. And he rode all those roller coasters and was fine. <laughs> wow. And Vincent lived until he was 81, 82 years old. Now, I, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. So I had a million dollar life insurance policy on that I had paid about a million two into. <laughs> And I was so happy. It was so ambivalent because I was so happy he was living all these great years and he was healthy. Yeah. And then when he passed away, I finally got the million dollars, but I had put in about a million two, which is really interesting. <laughs> so never buy life insurance policy. <laughs> yeah, in the, in the end, you lost money on it. I had to buy it because he was a key man. Yeah, Without absolutely. I didn't have 500 shows. Now, when I met you, I mentioned that I, uh, I was friends with Shelly Winters when she was live. And, and you said... Wow, that's for all the nice things Vincent Price could say about anybody, she's the only one. Boy, he didn't like that. What was that about? I have no idea. But when I mentioned the Shelly, go. <laughs> wow, that's so good. And, and it's weird because, like, I, I knew her and she was great to me. And then sometimes I'll meet people that knew her back in the day and oh, they'll yeah. say, oh, she was wonderful. Or they'll say, meanest person I ever yeah. met. Yeah, it's well, just. She might have been bipolar. We never know. Yeah. yeah. And, and just being a star back then, you know, probably like being a star now, you, you get a big head and you can right. talk to people the way you want. And yeah, I met some stars that were pretty mean. I bet. And then I met some stars that were wonderful, like Vincent, Kirk Douglas, and James Whitmer. Kirk Douglas, one of my if not my closest friend for 55 years. And I just saw him before we came up to Big Bear, and he was going to turn 103 December 9th. Wow. 103. And his, his mind is still 100%. His wife is still 100% her mind, 100%. She's probably 100. Now, do you mind mentioning um, just how it was that Mel passed away? I, I, I don't think a lot of people know, and it was kind of an accident, wasn't yeah. it? We had just finished an Oldsmobile commercial this day. And he had gone, he had had the flu a couple weeks before, and he was still coughing a bit, but he was good enough to spend seven hours, and we were shooting this commercial about Oldsmobile. It's, Did it's, he get many sore throats? Because his never bit, got a sore throat. Really? For using his voice that much, never? He could do you so many sand for an hour and never get it. He had vocal cords thicker than... <laughs> I bet. When they took the picture down him that he never forgave me for it because I sent him over to the doctor to take a picture down him. He says, what did that guy do? Put a camera down my throat. He says the vocal cords are very similar to Enrico Caruso's vocal cords, which they had on film also. Wow. That thick. But uh, where were we on that? <laughs> oh, we, we were saying how he, how, yeah, he was filming the Oldsmobile commercial. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were in the Oldsmobile commercial. It was the campaign, It's Not Your Father's Oldsmobile. I don't know if you remember that. About 1960, about 1988, 89, 90. Um, 19... 89, actually, 90. And uh, so we had done filming all day long. And then the cartoon characters were supposed to be brought in, animated at the end, singing the jingles. Right. The Oldsmobile. So his portion was, my dad's portion was done. And I says, Dad, why don't you run over to the doctor and just have him check out your chest, make sure everything's okay. And he ran over to the doctor's office and called me from there. He says, well, uh, the doctor says, I'll be doing fine, but he says he'd love to keep me in the hospital overnight to clear out his chest. I says, well, it can't hurt. Do you want to stay overnight? He says, sure. I can get good rest here. Well, I come there the next morning, and I said, how'd you do? He says, well, I didn't sleep real well because my, my leg really hurts me. I said, how? He says, well, I was reaching on the counter for something, and I fell off the bed. You know how tall the... But right, there weren't railings up. Put the railings up. They oh wow! The up. They had forgotten to change his shirt even. <sighs> They'd forgotten a lot of things. Yeah. He had broken his femur in a clean break. The, the fat emboli got into the bloodstream, and of course, they were able to operate, put the femur back together with screws. But the em fat emboli was in the bloodstream, and within 48 hours, he was stroking and passed away, and within. A, couple of weeks of that. And he wasn't, it wasn't like he was ever having health problems. He was in pretty good shape. Yeah, top form. Yeah. So Unbelievable. Uh, 
but he shouldn't have. Well, to his, to your credit and his credit, you coming into helping manage everything, it sounds like you changed his whole life because people really would take advantage of his, his abilities, weren't they? They didn't pay him what he was worth. Oh, and gosh. Well, he was making $45 a week for a long time. Yeah, I mean, and they... <laughs> then, then he asked for a raise, he got 65 And then <laughs> he asked for another raise, and they said, no, that's, we can't afford more than $65 a week, so we will give you screen credit. Well, that's the thing that really propelled Mel. The, the characters were already starting to be very well recognized because of the things that I Did he about. own the voice? Like, how did that work? Because you said he would do the voices in commercials. Did he have to get clearance through Warner Brothers to do he that? Or? Do those characters on commercials? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, on other things, no, but on um, commercials, yes. Okay. But, uh, so he would be paid for the commercials when he did the voice, of course. But for Warner Brothers cartoon, 65, but they gave him his name, solo voice credit on, on you know. What, Which 12, never was done before, was it? cartoons, no, no, no voice credit was ever given. So he had voice credit, and then when everybody went to the movies, because again, no television, they went to the movies every week. Yeah. 50 million people a week, I mean, that's a lot of people. Yeah, people seeing his name at some point. They saw his name up there, and so all the radio people would go to movies, they saw his name. Who's this guy that's doing every voice? And they'd call him up. And that's why he was doing virtually, you name the show. Yeah. Plus his own show. You can look it up. But he was doing 18 radio shows at one time. And then, of course, Capitol Records uh, started using the Warner Brothers characters for all their Capitol Records. Plus he did stuff outside of that. I found like an old, of, um, what was it, um, the, mu the music store on the corner of Vine he, where he's inside there showing off the inside of the store. store. Yeah, with Billy May, the great orchestra leader. <laughs> yeah. That was for Capitol Records also. But he would, uh, uh, he could do so many different voices and do so quickly change. By the way, it used to take almost six hours to do a cartoon. Because they would make him change voices. Tweety would have to talk to Sylvester, would have to talk to Right. So he could do 14 characters on one cartoon, but they'd have to, he'd have to change voices as they went along. Then they'd just snip it. So he finally said, well, you've got a great uh, editor, Trey Brown. He says, why don't I do all the Bugs lines, do all the Porky lines, then do all the whatever lines, Tweety, Sylvester, whatever, and then let him put them together. Well, they cut the re six hour recording session down to an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Big difference. Big wow. Difference. Yeah. And then you eventually got in and you started doing all the voices and you. No, I do a few of the voices. But well, you were on like, I mean, you, you're you an accomplished voice. You've done no. Family Guy, Tiny Toons, I mean, all that stuff, right? I, I understand that, but I'm not. No. I'm well, not. you're comparing yourself to maybe the greatest of all time it takes 20, ever. It takes 25 people to do what he did, really. And yeah. Then we all copies. And we're still talking about just the voice. We're not talking about creating the character, which I think people don't give him credit for enough. No, exactly. That's hard to create an entire personality for, for an guy. animal that you're asked to do a voice or yeah, create a voice a of. of. And said, do, do, create a character for Daffy Duck, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, how do I do that? But yes. So there was nothing, and nobody even close to him. There's some good people out there right now, but they'll do this voice and single voice, or two voices, or three voices, or four, but not 1,500. And now they're using stars, and they have started to use stars. It right, taking Dustin. away those jobs. It started with Dustin Hoffman with, uh, I think it was uh, My Arrow and Me. It was a television show in the, in the late 70s. And now they can get billing, and they can bill, you know, Whoever says Paul Newman when he did some, did uh, had a yeah in this cartoon. And nowadays they're using all the top stars to do, uh, and they and some of the stars are making, uh, gosh, eight ten million yeah to do the voice. Sometimes more. It's it's weird to see how everything's evolved into taking away the commercial actor. There used to be a time where nobody wanted to do TV now, and then it was commercial. Now all the big stars are doing commercials, and like you yeah. said, all the animated stuff. It's yeah. a whole different world. I'm so thankful that you were willing to talk. What would you like to um, impart to people about you, you and your dad? I think, honestly, you might be the best son anybody could ever have for all the things we were, that you did. We were very close. You still keep his memory we alive. We were very close. And right here when the, when the tour boats come in, they all say, do some voices. And then they talk about Mel 
and then when they come in, I go out there and do the voices. So I try to keep his name going all the time. And of course, the new book that my wife did, uh, Melvin the Mouth. Yeah, she, your wife's an accomplished children's 13 author. Books. 13 books. And wrote one about Mel as a little boy. Yes. True stories, basically, yeah, right? That's right. Catherine Blank. You can punch her up and see all yeah, that. I'm going to show the book in here, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The book is great. And uh, it tells about him as a little kid. And he was a precocious little guy. <laughs> yeah. He'd sit out in the back. It you know? all paid off, though. I think yeah. he ended up getting to use all that behavior into his oh, characters. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And he was so well loved, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, that's it. And I would say, uh, that's all, folks. Check out this bathroom, the Wall of Fame. Look at that crew. You know who that is? Yeah. yeah Milton Berle, yeah. Jimmy Durante. There's Jack Benny, and then up above them, Rod Serling and I did a lot of work together. The funniest, outside of being comedian, Rod Serling was one of the funniest men I've ever met. And Tony Curtis was right up there with him as being funny. They both could have been stand-up comics. No kidding. Yeah. There's who is, who is, was Jack Benny his best friend, would you say? Yes. Vincent up there. Dad and myself doing stuff together. Dad and mom. Your mom also did house. the voices. Didn't she when do the were, female voices? When they were young and they did a radio show up in Portland, she did all the female, he did all the male. They did a 11 o'clock to 12 midnight disc jockey show. And they wrote it, produced it, voiced it, and got $15 a week total for the, for the work. Down here's an interesting thing. You'll see Jerry Colonna, Frank Sinatra. Bob Hope, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Jim, oh, uh, what's your name? Somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Joey uh, mm, Colonan. Did I hear that your dad also used to volunteer at the uh, Hollywood Canteen? Yeah, that's that's what that is. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what that is. My dad had a uh, radio show called Mel Blanc Fiskers Fix It Shop, and. Just at the same time, my grandmother and grandfather, they wanted to do something. So my dad opened a little hardware store in Venice called the Mel Blanc Fix-It Shop, and he had national publicity. You should see how many people came to that store. I say, <laughs> if I can find the address, I'll go vlog it. <laughs> it, was, it only went for two years, 1948, 49, 50, during the period of the radio show. But he would appear down there sometimes, come down on a weekend, and kid around like that. And by gosh, it was the most popular hardware store in the city. <laughs> Little store. Show called Musical Chairs. Your dad did voices on Jack Benny, right? Oh, so many. He was he the was parrot. Jack, he was the parrot, the Maxwell, the Jack Benny's violin teacher, the C. Siso, Mexican uh, bass player. And when, when your dad was in the accident, didn't he come every day? Oh, yes. Jack Benny came yeah. to visit every day. Yeah. And for two weeks, Mel, he couldn't arouse Mel at all. There he is, eating a carrot with Abbott and Costello. Holy George cow. Hill. Clark Gable. Another one of my all-time favorites. George Burns. Wow. Yeah, he was on the George and Gracie show as well. Sure. We did here with there with Edgar Bergen. George Raft. That's when he was in the cast. Yeah. Blake cast. Andy Devine. Peter Laurie and then the cast of the Flintstones also. Oh, that's when they were recording. Yes. In bed. Yeah. That's how the microphone strung over his head there. And we are right about here. And there's the Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Is that's the one that Elvis was that's it. man in the steering wheel in. Think of that. Mel, Noel, Roy Rogers, and Elvis all hanging out, talking shop in that boat. Wow. For hours. Everybody from Jack Benny to George Burns to Lucille Ball to Kirk Douglas to Elvis. You know, you had everybody sitting in this. Thing. Yeah, and I, I sat in that chair, and that was the one that Elvis sat in. Oh, and plus a lot of other Jack Benny sat in. They all sat in all these chairs. Did your dad host a lot of parties here? 
they would love to come up during the weekend when they weren't working. Course, Jack Benny worked on Sundays. Right. So the two days that they were out of rehearsal, they would come up here. And uh, one winter, in fact, uh, he came up with uh, George Burns and myself, the three of us, and got snowed in and couldn't make the rehearsal. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> and George Burns trying to dig his way out of here was kind of interesting. I bet. <laughs> Smoking a cigar, I'm sure, at the same time. And there's the book that we were talking about, Melvin the Mouth. And there is the Blank Family car collection. What's the story behind this? We love cars from the very start. My dad was just a, 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 car, a, a major car collector. And so was I. Well, a friend of mine, when I told him I was going to come interview you at some point, he said, ask him if he still has that crazy car collection. I said, what? Mm -hmm. And then you told me that you had a big auction and yes. that... Well, we kept two and they were both in our wedding and I'll take you outside and show you. Well, take a look at that. Wow. Just like the one on the poster. How did you decide which ones to keep? I've always loved lead sleds, so I kept these. Wow. So you said these cars both have a great story. What's well, the... Yes. Well, they're George Barris kind of cars. Dick Dean, George Barris. And uh, this car, to me, is my favorite car of that I've ever had because of the lines. I've always liked Mercs. I couldn't uh, afford a Merc, nor I wasn't bad enough in high school to have a Merc, Merc so I had my mom's Pontiac. <laughs> I didn't get many dates, if any. But this is the kind of car that I've always loved, 51 Mercury and 50 and 49s. And uh, my wife Kat always loved it, and we both loved the flame car too. And on our wedding, uh, she came in in this car with her mom, and it was at the Warner Brothers lot, below the sign with all the cartoons. Who else can say they uh, did that? <laughs> and I came in in this car with the flames, with my best man. And underneath us was this huge mural that they had in relief of Bugs Bunny and all the characters and all the things, Batman, Superman, and everything that they did that was on the relief. Uh, it might still be there on the corner of Warner Brothers. Uh, and we had the party right in Warner Brothers. It was the first wedding they ever had at Warner Brothers. That's amazing. You have stories forever. We've already agreed. I'm going to come back up here. And we're going to meet up and, and talk again because uh, I think there's about another hour's so. worth of stuff oh, we could have gone done today. We'll have more fun. Well, Big Bear, we are out of here. But Noel was nice enough to give me some pretty interesting gifts on the way out. Let me show you what we got. There's the dam. Well, take a look at that. That's what they sent me home with. Not only the new book about Melvin when he was a little kid, but a signed Bugs Bunny photo, and the whole cast. How awesome is that? What a great time. Come home from my interview and this is what I see? Good grief! Hi, Jaw! Well, everyone, what a pair of vlogs for an interview. I just couldn't leave it all as one. I thought it'd be more fun to turn it into two, and I'm glad I did. I hope you guys enjoyed it. They were so awesome, him and his wife. I can't tell you how much fun we had. I, I almost hated to leave. We could have hung out for another couple of hours, but they had lunch plans. So we, they said, you know, please come back. And I said, I would, you have my word, I will. And, uh, and Noel said he's going to take me for a ride in those cars. And yeah, so we'll be up there hanging out, talking again, because next time, honestly, I'd like to talk more about him and all of his crazy stories. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed these two vlogs. And thank you, Amanda Powers, Denise Parkinson, and Heather Louise Gritzback for becoming my newest Patreons. And everyone that watches and helps this show continue on every day. I, you know, I look forward to every day. And I hope, you know, doing these videos keeps the history of Mel and everyone else that we talk about alive. So, have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good...
Bri bri bri. That's all, folks. Mm -hmm.